and welcome to space. In just a few days' time, ESA's Rosetta mission is going to come to a close, and it's going to do so in the most extraordinary fashion, because the spacecraft is going to slowly and deliberately crash land into the comet that it's been orbiting for the past two years. We're with the team as they prepare for this dramatic finale. This has been a mission full of surprises. From that night when I met you, we've been standing on the first was when Rosetta kept everyone waiting for it to wake up from a long hibernation. Then, in November 2014, Rosetta's tiny probe Philae landed on the comet. It bounced twice and then disappeared from view. What followed? Two years of science as Rosetta surveyed the comet on its closest approach to the sun. Then, another surprise a few days ago when Philae was finally spotted in a shady corner of the comet. So, what's next? Oh, we're going to land on the comet once more, this time with the mother ship. The spacecraft is not designed to land, will not survive the landing for sure, there's no doubt. The location we're targeting is a real, a real scientific gold mine. The dramatic finale will come on Friday the 30th of September. On that day, Rosetta will put itself on a deliberate collision course with the comet. If we take a model of the comet, on the head of the duck there's this area called Mart, which is a pretty interesting area because it's a very active region. And in particular, on this side, there are two areas, what we call pits, holes, which produce gas and dust. So the idea is to come with Rosetta and land near these holes. Thanks to its careful custodians, Rosetta has resisted 12 years in space. However, it will not be able to resist this. The structure of a satellite is very lightweight and very fragile. Rosetta in particular was absolutely not made to be able to withstand gravity because it's a satellite in orbit around a comet, a small weak body. At the moment of impact, Rosetta will be crushed. The solar panels and the antenna will be flattened onto the surface of the comet. Rosetta will remain on the comet forever because there's no way to get it off the surface of the comet. The mission is over because, as it follows the comet away from the sun, the spacecraft has less and less power from its solar panels. For its science masters, this ending presents a unique opportunity to take data and photos right until the end. The scenario we now have, this, this ballistic plunge from about 20 kilometres above the uh, comet right down to the surface, is fantastic. It gives us its unique profile of what the, the coma, the outer atmosphere of the comet looks like, right down to the surface, and that's probing something we've never probed before. Rosetta will send back high-resolution photos of some of the most interesting parts of the comet, offering a peek inside this ancient lump of dust and ice left over from the early solar system. We have these regions all over the comet, actually, on the back of the comet, uh, but on the head as well. There are pit, pit regions. They are these uh, large cavities, um, tens of metres, hundreds of metres across, and they have uh, debris inside them. We think they're fundamental in terms of the activity that's, uh, that that's we see from the comet, but also the sidewalls reveal some of the internal structure, and they reveal structure that we think is absolutely important in how that comet was made up, so the small scales, tens of metres, well, metres to tens of metres, we're seeing stuff there and we want to get really high resolution images of that, so that will be our final thing, looking into the sidewalls of one of those pits just before we hit. 
For all that to happen, Rosetta has to survive the last few days as it flies close to the comet and completes the final descent. When flying very close to the surface of the comet, the biggest risk is to have problems in the navigation. So in predicting where Rosetta will be around the comet, what we are doing now technically is much, much more demanding than the day we landed with Philae. In the final moment, there'll be no time to make adjustments. The team will just take the data and cross their fingers. If we're lucky, we keep the signal until the very end. We don't know with which part of the spacecraft it will touch down. So it could be that uh, maybe a solar panel touches first and then the attitude of the spacecraft is disturbed. We may lose the signal. So the last few minutes uh, are going to be yeah, a bit difficult to predict. Latest, when it's on the surface, we will lose the signal. The spacecraft will be programmed for that uh, because we don't want to leave an active spacecraft on the comet that then could pollute uh, the, the radio frequency environment. So it will switch off and that will be the end of the mission. Away from Rosetta now and to an update on the mission that we've been following all year in this program, and that's ExoMars. Right now, the spacecraft is really getting very close to the red planet and tension is mounting in this episode of Destination Mars. Hello, my name is Michel Denis and I'm the flight director for ExoMars. We've completed most of the cruise phase. We left Earth just over six months ago, and in a few weeks, we're going to arrive at Mars. We can't delay the moment we arrive at Mars by a day or even a minute. So everything relies on us, and the countdown is underway, and there's no way we can stop it. The chances of success of the TGO orbiter are very high, and the chances of success of the lander, Scaparelli, are high too. But of course, it's more difficult to land on Mars than to put yourself into orbit around it. Mars is the culmination of a dream. It's these huge distances, massive spaces, the idea that one day humans will go and visit this planet or even stay there. And of course, there's the idea that there might have been or there could still be life on Mars. That's all for now, but of course you'll be able to follow the dramatic end to the Rosetta mission as it happens live here on Euronews and Euronews.com.